So in a recent video, we decided to look at a comparison between a number of different DJ apps, uh, one of them being Pacemaker. But during the recording of the app, the uh, recording of the app, the recording of the video, uh, the app didn't uh, decide didn't want to work. Um, we got in touch with Pacemaker and we offered them the opportunity uh, to um, have a fair review of the app. Um, partly based on the fact that I absolutely adore the the, the look of the app. Um, and it's not a new app. It's been around for quite a while, and it comes off the back of a handheld controller that they produced uh, quite a few years ago now, which was absolutely stunning. Uh, a little single-handed, uh, uh, well, single-handed, uh, handheld uh, player with two little um, decks on it, one for effects and one for uh, the actual playback of the track. And I saw quite a few DJs actually use them out live. Um, so when they came into the uh, digital DJ market, into the iOS device side of things, I thought it was time to give them a look and uh, see what they can do. So we're going to open the app and you can see there that Pacemaker logo comes up and then we're into the screen. Uh, we can see two pads and load track tab here flashing away at the top and a little outline of a crossfader towards the bottom. Now I'm going to try and make this video as short as possible. I'm not, I know I go on sometimes in these videos, so we'll, we'll try and keep it uh, nice and sweet. Uh, we'll hit the tab here button to load up your track library. And from there, you can see over the left-hand side, you've got a Spotify option. If you have a Spotify account, you can log in and utilize that. You've got a mixes section. Here you can see something I was messing around with a little while ago. This is your recorded mixes when you've recorded something new. And then I, the iTunes logo gives you an option to access your library. Now, one thing I must state, and this is the same, I believe, over a lot of apps, um, you can't utilize iTunes, uh, sorry, Apple Music tracks, tracks that are cloud-based for Apple Music. That's that's what you, your Spotify is there for anyway. Um, but you can utilize tracks that are on the uh, on the iPad themselves. So as I do with all my videos, I'm going to use tracks uh, authorized by YouTube uh, to be used for uh, these types of videos without infringing any copyright. I like to keep things on the straight and narrow. We'll load a track into both sides. Uh, just so that we've got uh, full visibility there of what you can see when you've got two decks loaded. Uh, green to the left, pink to the right. And the layout is something very familiar, really, to be honest with you. And uh, to the left-hand side and the right-hand side, it's the same, but mirrored slightly. So you'll see uh, the record button up at the top central location. To the left, you've got your BPM for your left track, your track title and your track artist. And then to the right, you've got your uh, BPM, your artist and your track title as well you've got your waveforms just underneath in a very simple line bar type approach and underneath those you've got your platters with a few functions within the platters that you can see in the center there your sync button and then towards the bottom your crossfader and your two q your 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 pause play buttons i'll try and get that out properly now there's no hot hot cue functionality that we we have within this app and um, you can manipulate the the cue point that is set for you which is that a uh, bar with the the colored circle and then a white dot in the middle to manipulate that you literally use a two finger gesture pushing them down pushing your fingers down on the waveform and pulling your fingers apart will bring you into the zoomed in waveform and holding the paddle and moving it will move it along the length of the waveform the little black sections that you can see here the little dips one two three there are the beats or the beat county, the beat grid, I suppose you'd call it in this particular app um, for the track. If you set your cue point between those points, it will snap to the nearest available option. And when you play it, play it, you will hear that it just starts the track so that you can test your cue point. There we go. So we zoom back out to the main uh, place, the main home screen. That's the words we're looking for. I'm not very good at words when I'm talking, really, to be honest. I try to make these as honest uh, reviews as possible, not scripted or anything like that, so that you understand that I am thinking as I'm talking, so to speak, and making sure that you get the best opinion uh, from myself. And it's just my opinion at the end of the day. We'll play a track. Uh, the one on the right here is Vibe Tracks Deep Hat. You'll see the black line uh, swirling around on the video. And that, of course, is your track indicator for the position. A bit like a uh, a scratch marker when you're, you're using the system for scratching. And on that note, just quickly, we'll just show you something about Pacemaker that I quite like that you don't tend to see a lot in the other apps. 
it's got a very natural sound to it when you touch the platter, so to speak. A lot of apps, it can sound digital. It can sound very sudden, so a very sudden start, very sudden stop. Pacemaker have managed to get this so that it, it's got that little bit of flutter, that little bit of wow in there that you get with a, 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 an actual vinyl, a, a, piece, a piece of vinyl. Now, I'm no scratch jock, but there is something different about that. It does sound slightly better than a lot of other apps. And into the four uh, icons in the center of the deck there, we're going to start with the little clock icon to the right hand side. And when you press that, you get the nudge and tempo uh, rings come up. As you'll find throughout this app, they utilize the ring in multiple ways using a single and a double ring op option in a lot of the functions. Nudge is as you would expect, expect it to be. This is just the ability to momentarily speed up or slow down the track. This is for just nudging that track back into place when it's slightly out of sync with another, another track that's playing. And of course, when you let go, it, it drops back to the default position. And then of course, you've got your tempo starts off at zero and as you go around to the right it will increase and as you go down to the left it will decrease it gives you a nice breakdown of the bpm at the top and of course the percentage below there's a nice little latch function around the zero so as you go backwards and forwards past the zero you will find it holds for a second before it carries on there we go and that means that it's very easy to get back to zero when you need to Across the other side, we've got the beat jump function. So uh, we've got uh, down to minus eight and plus eight. And you can jump back through the track just by pressing the buttons. And you'll hear that the beats don't skip or jump. It doesn't sound out of place. It does get more noticeable depending upon how you do it, of course, but that's the same with any particular app or, or beat jump function within an app even. To the top there, we've got your loop functionality. A couple of really nice fun, uh, parts to this. You've got your standard uh, auto looping. So from an eight beat bar down to four, one, half, quarter, an eighth and a sixteenth. But you can slide your finger across as well. give that nice harvesting of the of, of the loop type effect but then there's this extra little um suitcase icon from the suitcase icon if you press that you'll see that it starts off at with a millisecond uh, display and you can decrease that or increase that by just spinning your finger around on the icon so you can set your loop and then And then when you let go, it restores back to its original pace. Now, one thing I will just touch on, I've just thought about while I'm doing this, is there is no button for key key lock or, or, or tempo lock on the app. So I'm just going to quickly turn the tempo, but let's see whether we can hear whether it's a default action. So yeah, it does appear to be a default action on the app. The one thing I will say about it is that with it being a default action, the 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 um, the stretch when it gets uh, short the, to its shortest period or its longest period at the extremes do sound more digital than than the likes of Serato. But Serato is of course a desktop app that has a lot more um, functionality, a lot more power behind it, whereas this is just an, uh, a, a, an iPad app, and a lot of the apps suffer from the same issue. Now, things get really interesting when you get into the uh, effects section on uh, Pacemaker. And as you can see, there's a nice colorful ring there. And as standard, you will get the left hand side there. So you'll get the gain, you'll get the treble, you'll get the mid, you'll get the bass, and you get the um, high low filter, I believe. 
So from there, to be able to set your or, or play with your filter, it's the same as the rest. How intuitive. Low pass, low pass to the left. And high pass to the right. You get your trouble, your plus and minus. Your mid and your base do the same thing. And then the bottom three there can be changed. And um, we've got a white noise generator. And it'll hold on while it's while you've got your finger on it. And when you let go, you'll see it dissipates back to nothing. You've got a reverb function as well. And then you've got a two ring setup on some of the other effects. So on this one, it's roll your center one uh, center ring gives you your length of your roll. So a four bar two. One half and a quarter and an eighth. And then your dry wet is on the outer ring. Once your dry wet is at full, you can, of course. Manually adjust that with the inner ring as well. So we go into the settings. You'll see down the bottom of the screen there we've got echo, chop, chop, and 8-bit. We'll do what we'll do is we'll quickly swap them into the effects section. We'll take those three out. It is literally just a drag and drop functionality. Oh, white noise we already had in, didn't we? It's chop, chop, once put in. There we go. And then hitting the uh, tool, we'll go back to the main screen. And from there, you can see that the Echo has got two rings, the Chop Top has got two rings, and the 8-bit is just a single ring. So we'll play with the 8-bit first. Nice little effect, and I do like the fact that there's a nice little animation to go with it. The Chomp Chop is basically a gator uh, transform type effect. Again, up to 100% on the dry wet will allow you to then use the inner ring to shorten or increase the BPM that's used on. You have to excuse my, uh, my fingers knocking onto other effects while I'm doing this. That is, that is not... Standard, that is just uh, the issue I have with my iPad and my fingers. So apologies to Pacemaker, it is nothing to do with them. Into the Echo, and we can put that up to full. And then the inner ring. Again, you can change that functionality, what, what range that affects. In the top left there, you've got an FX button flashing away and pulsing. That will kill any effects that have been activated on the app. And then taking it on again if you press it again. You've got the standard sync functionality as you would expect with an app like this. Fires up the second track and matches the BPM and you can crossfade into that. I'm not a massive fan of sync, but it does have it. You have its uses when you're using beat or orientated um, effects. So I have no issue with it being there and whether you choose to use it, it's your own choice. The fact that this app does have a, a pitch nudge and a pitch, a, a tempo control uh, on it says to me that you don't really need to use that. Uh, your record function is nice and simple. You just hit the record button once and you'll see the time increase. Records the master output from the app, so whatever you're playing at the time will get recorded into that. You press it the second time to stop it. And then if we hit the track, the, the track name at the top there to go into your library, we'll see in the mixes section, there's a second one there at today's date, 11.22, showing the other track. And if we click that, 
the short as it is it will add it into the track deck and you can play that mix back uh, straight away pretty much as you probably noticed in the settings here um, there is an autopilot function as well autopilot will play and mix between tracks um, I don't have many on here to, to be able to use the functionality too much, but it is there if you need to use it. And I think, to be honest with you, I've got to say that um, personally, I think that uh, Pacemaker, Pacemaker have got it absolutely right. I love the fact that it's very intuitive to use all of the effects and the loops and everything else. It's all based on that same functionality. No matter what you do in this app, it's all around the platters, uh, which is great because you don't, end, you don't end up with a cluttered screen. I do miss the cue points. I think there needs to be some cue point functionality in here. Um, but I think with the continued work that Pacemaker are doing on this app, I think that uh, that is possibly uh, something that they will look at. All in all, I think this is a great app and you wouldn't be uh, going to miss spending your money on it. This is a beta version that I, I've got here that I'm testing uh, to use for this video. Um, there are... Um, I thought the full version is on the iTunes store uh, at the moment, the Apple store. So you can go and get the full version. And for me, it is well worth playing with, well worth having to go with. So uh, remember, it's free to use. You have to utilize uh, in-app purchases to get to the other effects, the extended loops and the beat jumps and stuff like that. They're not massively expensive and you can buy a full pack uh, of those let's just see if we can get to that in the settings options and i'll try and show you no my ipad oh there we go again this is my ipad not uh not the app itself so you've got your standard settings you've got your snappy cue points your normalization uh your time stretch that's your tempo stuff that's not on the main screen it is there within your settings your split output if you want to put it out to, to left and right on your uh, headphones um all in all, it's a pretty good app, I've got to be honest. Um, there's not much more I can say. Have a look, have a play. I'll link it uh, in the description below. A massive thanks to the guys at Pacemaker for providing this version of the app for me to test and to review for you today. Uh, catch them on um, Twitter as well. And uh, enjoy. See you later.